let's go to South America and see a Catholic uh, seer there, a visionary there. Uh, she has been there a number of years. Okay. Her name is Luz de Maria de Bonilla. Living in Argentina, the land who gave us the Pope, the present Pope, though she hails from Chile. And she has been the instrument of God for messages from 1992. Uh, I, Ed, could you shed some light on Luz yes, de Maria de Bonilla? Uh, Luz de Maria de Bonilla. She's a Catholic mystic. She has received the wounds of our Lord. She's a stigmatist. In fact, uh, the Lord appeared to her and he asked her, would you like to take part in my suffering? Luz de Maria readily agreed. She said, yes, Lord, I would want to take that suffering. And then she received the wounds of the Lord. So besides uh, being a stigmatist, she's a wife, she's a mother. She's very active in the church. And uh, she's also known as a prophet from uh, Costa Rica. If you look at her childhood, her parents will uh, teach a lot of things of the faith. And also she had a great devotion to the Eucharist. She began to experience heavenly visits, especially from her guardian angel. And then slowly the Blessed Mother started appearing to her. So this was her childhood. Then we look at how the revelation started. First of all, uh, she was having some illness and she received a miraculous healing in the year 1990. And then the Blessed Mother started speaking to her regularly in the year 1992. As time went by, even Jesus started speaking to her. Various events, you know, coming events are revealed to her by Our Lady and by the Lord Jesus. Uh, predictions came through and one now, of them was... Now, incidentally, this is one quality that shows it's coming from God. A person in advance says, so-and-so thing will happen. And it actually happens. No, and this is one thing spectacular about this visionary Luz de Maria Bonilla. If you tell us a little more about these sort of things. Yeah, yes, sir. Uh, in fact, uh, she had told about the Twin Tower attack just eight days before. It. And then the prophecy was fulfilled. Now, if you look at the, the messages that have been revealed to her, on one side, we have a warning of... Uh, things that are going to come in this world, things like the communism, which will rise to its peak, the war and the use of nuclear weapons, then uh, pollution. I spoke a little earlier about Revelation chapter 12 and the fight between the dragon and the woman clothed in the sun. And Revelation chapter 12 actually tells us that the color of the dragon is red. And here you speak about communism and it's coming peak. And Our Lady at Fatima had also said that she said Russia, with the first country to turn communist, will spread its errors all over the world. And the world will suffer as a result. As you know, now China is still very much communist. And red is the color that the communists use. Ah, and red is the dragon. I don't know, it's not upon us to surmise about it, but it's just confirming communism and it's coming Speak. Yeah. So these messages speak about war and the use of nuclear weapons. Then things like pollution, famine, plagues, which you can already see happening around us. A revolution, a lot of revolution taking place all over the world, social unrest in cities, you know, and slowly the moral degradation, the homosexuality and lesbianism and other things are so prevalent in the uh, many of the countries. Including living together without marriage is becoming common. They call it partnership and they just live together. And Our Lady has rightly used the word moral depravity. A, a schism in the church, which means a division in the church. Yeah. Continue. Then also the fall of the world economy, the prices shooting up, the public appearance and the world domination of the Antichrist. Then uh, the fulfillment of the warning, the miracle and the chastisements. And then also about the fall of an asteroid and the change of terrestrial geography among the other messages. So these are all the warning messages of the coming tribulations. 
but then uh, at the same time our lady and lord jesus also say all this is not to frighten but this is to urge man to turn his gaze toward god as i said it is as if the lord is saying to man well now you have made your bed you have to sleep in it you have invited this upon yourself because i gave you and i showed you mercy and my was stretch my mercy but still people are and you spoke about the asteroid incidentally our lord said that the powers in space in this time in the gospel of matthew and the gospel of luke here in describing these times says the powers in space will be shaken so normally everything runs according to its orbit in space these terrible catastrophes whenever there's a clash of uh, space bodies an asteroid is a piece of uh, one of the planets or something floating in space normally they would not interfere for late lot of come close by to the earth and it is said by scientists that many thousands of years ago an asteroid was it that crashed into the earth destroying the dinosaurs and all big life you know the mammoth elephants etc were destroyed because it was a terrible catastrophe so these are the summing up of the messages to who's the maria banila anything else anything of late the messages that we just heard were all about warnings but at the same time you know there are messages of encouragement also where our lady and the lord jesus they have revealed there's going to be a resurgence of true faith a lot of people are going to practice true faith and there's going to be unity of people of god the triumph of the immaculate heart of mary then the final triumph of christ the king of the universe where there will no longer be any divisions but we will be all one people under one god so there are encouraging messages as well and that as i said is pointed out even in the book of revelation that we are heading as a result of the chastisement to a thousand years of peace immaculate heart will triumph and the kingdom of god which we have been praying in the our father prayer every day by millions of generations and people that will come true the kingdom of god is in heaven but as a time will come the people will do the will of god here on earth yeah now as far as the position of the church is concerned what the church has to say about the messages there are a lot of priests and nuns who are working along with lusa maria father suze maria fernandes he has always been there with lusa maria as a confessor you know from the beginning from the beginning of her locutions and visions now uh, some of the recent messages that have been given to lusa maria november 1st 2021 what is ordained in the law of god must lead humanity to be an extension of the divine will which governs everything practice the law of god do not recite it by rote but behind every statement find out how much of it has been broken and how much you have not yet fulfilled on october 19th 2021 of this year you are heading is, towards the moment when man will fight against man forgetting that he is a creature of god faced with the famine that is looming over humanity and darkness so deep that you'll not be able to see your hands darkness similar to that which human beings are carrying in their souls due to the continuous sins in which they immerse themselves as humanity reminds me they you see empty shelves but it reminds me also of the queues for food in various countries and indeed fights whenever rations come in various countries because there's lack of food you have the money as one visionary said you will have the money but there will be no food so uh could you tell us a little about this other visionary from south america his name is uh, pedro regis if you could briefly tell us because i know he's from brazil and he has been remarkable because the lord first started speaking to him in the year 1987 no and i want to know uh, from peter regis in short Uh, and what are the any latest message that he has been asked to convey on november 6 of uh, 2021 this is a message whatever happens do not forget in everything god first the 
emphasis is on putting God first above all else, putting Jesus first. The, the next message, October 2nd, 2021 of this year. You are living in a time worse than the time of the flood, and the moment has come for your return. Do not fold your arms. Turn to the one who is the way, truth, and life. You are heading for a painful future. The enemies of God will act against men and women of faith. Many consecrated will retreat out of fear, and the pain will be great for you. You will yet see horrors on earth. This is just two months back. Anything else to be added? Yeah, there's another message on March 30th, 2021. You are living in a time of great spiritual confusion, and only those who pray will be able to bear the weight of the trials that will come. Give me your hands. I want to help you, but I need your sincere and courageous yes. Repent and seek the mercy of my son, Jesus. Approach the confessional and be filled with God's love. In confession is the cure for your ills. You will yet see horrors on earth. Seek strength in the gospel and in the Eucharist. You are heading towards the future of great division and confusion. Only those faithful to the true magisterium of the church of my Jesus will remain standing. You can sense the appeal. Give me your hand. I want to help you. All I need is a sincere and courageous yes. Look at that. And yet the world is so blind and turns away. Is there anything more on P? On yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, let's go to Brazil only, but uh, let's shift focus to another visionary. He's been receiving visions and messages from the Lord from 1997, based in Brazil. And uh, I would like to know how exactly he came to the Lord, because it's a remarkable story. Francis, uh, based on your research, could you tell us about Eduardo Ferreira, almost like a Goan name? Thank you, brother. Uh, I would like to speak about Eduardo Ferreira. He was born in 1972 in the state of Santa Catarina in Brazil. When he was very a small boy, if, just to tell you in short, he found an image of Our Lady in his backyard and he brought the image of Our Lady and he and his sister started praying. Our Lady of Aparecida is very famous. Great devotion in South America. She would be the equivalent in India of Our Lady of Alankani, very great. So just to tell you all, okay, continue. And uh, in 1988, this uh, boy, you know, he got the first apparition, first vision of Our Lady, as if uh, standing in a grotto made of rose. And uh, from there onwards began the apparitions for this boy, Eduardo Ferreira. He was 15 years old. And uh, this uh, Eduardo Ferreira is a stigmatist. And not only that, he has been blessed with many other charisms like a prophecy, healing, dreams, visions, biolocation, discernment of spirits. And it so happened that uh, he started evangelizing along with another person, Alcio Martin Paz, you know, going around and proclaiming. And he started, and he got uh, various, he suffered a lot of persecutions, you know, death threats from his own family members. And Mary appears to him till today under the title Rosa Mystica. And she gives him various messages. And on 12th of every month, she appears to uh, Eduardo Ferreira and she speaks to him and gives him various messages. And not only that, even the Lord has been speaking to him and giving him the messages. And at this place in Brazil, uh, various uh, miraculous events have taken place, like uh, lacrimations of blood from the statue of the Virgin and also uh, the dance of the sun, you know, thing that happened in Fatima, Portugal, same thing has happened there. And many people and thousands of people come there, you know, to visit Our Lady. I am really and, uh, amazed. I'm really amazed at the way that God confirms his instruments. Now, uh, these things which have been 
witnessed by hordes of people such as the dance of the sun like in Fatima is a thing that he cannot do. Even if he is a fraud, he could not have arranged it. But God is his own way of trying to confirm that I am speaking to this instrument. And yeah, and uh, the current message, the recent message that has come is on October 13, uh, 2021. And the, this, this is just a gist of that message which uh, Mother Mary has given is the time of the success of Peter is coming to an end and pray much for the one who is coming. This is what she has said. And further it is said, no countries will escape divine justice. And Mary specifically, she asks, you know, to pray for priests and missionaries all around the world, to pray for them. They are in need of much prayers, you know, our intercession. So this is what she's been asking. This is a message, particularly uh, since it has come on October 13th, it means uh, the anniversary of the miracle of the sun. But uh, Francis, coincidentally, a number of other visionaries, as we'll see, have confirmed. Some going to the extent of saying that it has been told to them and they asked to convey that the reign of Pope Francis is coming to an end. So really traumatic times of the church. And read with the other message is going to be division in the church, etc. One, one visionary said, more specifically, Eastern churches are trying to break off from the church. And uh, as Our Lady said at Fatima, the smoke of Satan has entered the church. A great time and a great need of prayer for the current Pope, Pope Francis. Please continue. Yeah, and this uh, Edward has been getting uh, visions, no, apparition not only of Our Lady and Jesus, but even uh, from saints, you know, Saint Michael, the Archangel, Saint Ge Archangel Gabriel, Arch Archangel Raphael, you know, Saint Vincent de Paul has been speaking to him, Saint Catherine Labor, Saint Anthony, Blessed Francisco and Jacinta. You know, and uh, St. Rita of Cassia, Padre Pio, and St. Pauline. So many saints have been have visited uh, Eduardo Ferreira. And one more message I would like to show you, which came on uh, May 12th of this year, 2021. And this is what Jesus told Eduardo. Over the centuries, my Holy Mother has multiplied her appeals, her warnings. Few have listened to her. I see many rebelling and blaspheming against apparitions. I tell you besides, nothing can delay the warnings that will fall on many countries like thunder. This is what Jesus is telling with sadness that many are still not believing the messages of his own mother, our mother. So this, this is, is on May 12th, and May 12th is one day before the anniversary of the start of the apparitions in Fatima, which started on May 13th. Anything more we have had? Also another message that had come on January 13th, 2021, early this year. It, uh, it is the time, it says, it says that the time you have left for conversion is running out. Take care. Pray for my favorite sons, the priest. Many of them are still in danger. The time is running out, Mary is saying. And we need to pray for the priest and the seminarians and the religious. And there's one more, one last message I'd like to show you all, spoken on October 12, 2021. And this is what uh, Our Lady tells Eduardo Ferreira, carry with you brown or green scapulars. This is a time of grace and mercy that God is giving to each one. Accept with love all that God has given you. So wearing the scapular is what Mary is stressing. I'm not surprised, yes, no, no. I'm not surprised that she speaks about the wearing the scapula of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. That is the title by which she has appeared in some places. Mount Carmel is the place in the Old Testament where Elijah fought a lonely battle against all the false prophets of Baal and defeated. Everyone believed the false prophets. Elijah single-handedly defeated them there. And Mary, the in the new avatar, avatar of the of Elijah in the modern times, fighting a lonely battle against those who are going by the false prophets, who are going by the false gods, 
who are going by saying that there is no God, fighting a lonely battle. But in the end, as she said, her immaculate heart will triumph. So she takes the title Our Lady of Mount Carmel, and she has been saying to a lot of visionaries, keep this scapula, wear it in these times. Yeah. Is there anything more you have yeah, read? Yeah, and Edward Ferreira has received uh, more than 8,000 messages so far. And all the messages that he has received are convergent of many serious contemporary uh, sources. They are all matching the messages that various seers are getting all around the world. They are all matching. It is uh, very much uh, applicable for us today. Uh, Slovakia, as you know, is in the heart of Europe. And from there, I'm amazed to know in 1995 onwards, God has been speaking through an instrument. His name is Martin Gavenda, Catholic. Could you shed some light on him in your research, Marlon? Uh, yes, brother. This is a, a very interesting thing that happened in Slovakia. And uh, the Virgin Mary, as we have seen in the past, uh, loves to appear to children. So in 1994, in December, in uh, Slo uh, Slovakia, four children were returning from Sunday Mass. This was in a village called Dektich. And as they were returning from Mass, one of them saw the sun spinning and changing colors. And uh, so what they did was the four children decided to go to a cross and they began to pray the rosary over there. Now, one of them, uh, Martin Gavenda, he not only saw the sun spinning, but he saw a white light and a female figure standing in front of him. And she said to him, I want to use you for God's plan. So at that time, he did not understand what uh, she was saying. Neither did he know exactly who she was. But being little children, what they did was the next time uh, this happened, and they had holy water with them and they decided to sprinkle it on that place where they were seeing the white light. But the woman did not disappear. Uh, and then uh, the apparitions continued. Almost a year later, on the 15th of August, 1995, this woman identified herself to Martin Gavenda and she said, I am Mary, Queen of Help. That was the exact uh, title she used, Queen of Help. Now, uh, the children have uh, received even the blessing of the Monsignor over there, Monsignor Dominic Toth of Tranava Bratislava Archdiocese, that is where they are from. And an official inquiry began in the year 1998. Till now, the apparitions are being monitored by the church. Okay, so Martin Gavenda, you know, very youthful in his appearance. Not many messages he has received, but uh, I want to show you the latest message, which was on the 15th of October which almost corresponds with the messages that we have been speaking about, what Francis, Edmund, all of us have been saying. This is on 15th October 2021. My beloved children remain gathered around my immaculate heart, praying the Holy Rosary, for the great desolation has begun. And this is how you began uh, speaking to us today, brother. The great desolation has begun. Heresies and errors are spreading. This is the final struggle for the preservation of the true Catholic faith. It has nothing to do with the new spring of the Holy Spirit. That will come after the great desolation. Stay protected in our sacred hearts. So this is the latest message from uh, Martin uh, Gavenda. From there, I think we will move out from Europe, South America, etc., and of course, there are many, many, many more testimonies of genuine visionaries and people who have changed their life and been used by God, Americas, in Australia, in Africa. But it's just impossible, you know, to, to bring out everything. So I'll just take the highlights. And I will go to Canada now. Canada. And I combine both India and Canada here because this is a couple from India, from Goa a lady who was absolutely a lukewarm Catholic and uh, she was a hairdresser and a lady of fashion and like all others, never took God so seriously. But over 25 years ago, God started already working in her life in Canada where she was with her husband, also a person from Goa and her life changed drastically. If you see her today, 
you will not even recognize the original person who was there earlier, who was a lady of fashion and lady of the world. And her name is Iveta Fernandez, and she has taken also a middle name on the instructions of Our Lady who appears to her, and that is Cleophas, Iveta Cleophas Fernandez. Now, before I say about her, let me tell you that I told you all that there's no other century in which Mary has appeared so much as the last century and now beginning with this century. At over 800 places in the last century. And if you see Mary's appearances in the 18 centuries before that, very, very few. But why is it concentrated in this century, the last one, and now in this 20 years of this 21st century? Simply because the time has arrived. And this itself is an indication. The battle of the great woman clothed with the sun and the dragon symbolized by the devil. And she was preparing and delaying it, asking people to convert with her tears sometimes. But alas, now the time has run out. Now we can pray, but not for postponement. We can pray only to reduce the intensity of the chastisement. That's all. And that's what she said. And one of the ones she had appeared to way back 25 years ago was to this lady Iveta in Canada in a place called Mormora. And she was given instructions, go back to Goa in India. And she was shown a vision of a church, search for that church. So she came to Goa and she landed in the searching all over. She could not find this church. A few days before she had to leave back, God directed and showed her the church. It was an abandoned church. Abandoned because of a plague had come in that village. So everyone had abandoned the church. But the moment she arrived there, the church, she recognized it as the same church she saw in the vision. The church at Batim in Goa on the hillock. Our Lady frequently appearing on the top of hills. And she instructed the visionary to tell them to dig a well, to open the well that was at the side of the church. But there was no well there. But later, when they took the history books and saw, about 400 years back, there was a well, and it had been buried below. So they opened the well on her instructions. In the coming years, water started flowing, and many documented healings have taken place using that water. This is the story of Iveta and how God has been using her. Maybe we look at the, uh, Iveta's story. And I would like to say, first I would like to show you the messages, the prophetic messages, particularly of this time. Iveta's messages are messages of urgency. Coinciding exactly this, she says the time has arrived, there is no time. And she speaks extensively, and Our Lady has instructed her to publish a book, which she has done this year. Okay, so listen to the prophetic messages. And many times during the apparitions at Batim and Goa, you see she's talking to Our Lady, but she's totally oblivious of her surroundings, who is around her. And she's looking at the words flowing from the Virgin's mouth and just repeating them. And those are the messages. No? Even her eyes are fixed in such a gaze that nothing can disturb her. Truly, for us, you know, who have not experienced this sort of thing, it is, a, it is an indication of showing what happens in a true God encounter. Maybe we have it in a video form. Iveta Cleophas Fernandez has been receiving messages from the Blessed Virgin Mary since over 25 years. This book, Suffering and the Thesis of Purgatory, with prophetic warnings for our world comes into being at the request of our Holy Mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God. The Mother of God reveals that we are entering the purification before the era of a thousand years of peace. This book with a preface by Catholic Bishop Alwin Barito and an introduction by Catholic priest Father Antoine brings to life the prophecies of Fatima and unfolds the Book of Revelation in the messages revealed by the Blessed Virgin Mary to the victim Sir Levita Cleophas Fernandez. 
It reveals that great powers are given to the adversary in these times and speaks of the great tribulation and of the birth pans of the great apostasy, the first being the diabolic pandemic, the second birth pan being the fallout of a diabolic nature, of which we are at the threshold. This book also contains prophetic messages of the impending schism of the Catholic Church and of the persecution that will befall to purify the Church before the promised era of peace. In revealing the spiritual battle that we are currently engaged in, the messages contained in this book give us a spiritual roadmap for the times ahead, and calls for the proclamation of the fifth Marian dogma, Mary, Mediatrix of all grace, co-redemptrix and advocate. The first part of this book outlines the profound value of suffering, when this suffering is united to the passion of our Lord Jesus, through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, the Mother of God. The second part reveals precious insights into the realms of purgatory, of souls serving divine justice and of the process required to attain their crown of glory. Readers are advised to exercise spiritual discernment as some of these prophecies and warnings to be fulfilled soon are quite disturbing. Some of their consequences can be mitigated if we choose to pray, offer up our suffering and convert. and sons, upon you rests the weight of this terrible darkness, yet fear not, know and understand the power entrusted by God to you. You stand in the highest rank of men. Your office is of a higher office, do not compromise. Only know that you have the power to exercise all these children out of the spirits of darkness and bring them into the spirit of light. Know and understand also that you must take the sacramental grace awarded to you and entrusted unto you by Jesus, my divine son, the high priest, in whose footsteps you follow, to carry this mission and to lead the church in union with your Holy Father. We thank you for listening to this broadcast. May the blessed said Virgin Mary, the mother of God protect you and bring you to her beloved son Jesus, our savior and redeemer. May Saint Michael the Archangel defend you in the day of battle. Well, for more details, you all can go there. Iveta has also experienced things like transformation of the communion to the flesh and blood of Jesus on several occasions. She's experienced the sufferings of Jesus. She's offered herself as a victim soul. And the value of suffering is tremendously increased when we offer it to Jesus for the conversion of sinners. We don't have to offer big sufferings, but practical things. We're getting irritated, say, by the wife at home, or we react, we shout at her, or we have the habit of irritating someone. When you don't react to irritation, or when you don't irritate another person, you don't shout at the wife or you don't shout at the husband. You don't quarrel. You restrain yourself from telling a lie. You restrain yourself from boasting about yourself, etc. These are small sufferings. And it is sufficient if you do this. You become a victim soul like them. You know? And when you offer this suffering to Jesus, he uses it for the conversion of even more souls. And this is the call of Iveta, not her call, but the call of Mother Mary through Iveta, especially to priests. Offer yourself as victim souls. Jesus needs partners in the process of salvation. He's inviting us into a partnership of salvation of the world. Also, Iveta had predicted as far back as September 
of 2019, four months before the pandemic broke out, that a pandemic is coming. No? So Iveta remains a powerful instrument of God. Fruits of her life also are very, very apparent. Very holy life, a total conversion for the last three decades almost now. It's interesting how it all happened. Maybe uh, we could see in this video how it started, particularly, I want to see it because it's uh, relating to Iveta who hails from Goa and how exactly over the last 25, 30 years, the Lord led her into this holy role as an instrument, a powerful instrument, though in Canada, also in Goa. The Visitations and Messages of the Blessed Said Virgin Mary at Mount Badham, Goa, India, given for our world, through the visionary, Iveta Cleophas Fernandez. The Devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary at Badham, Goa, India. The story of Badham unfolds on September 24, 1994, when the visionary Iveta Fernandez, a Canadian of Indian origin, beholds the apparition of the Blessed Virgin Mary at Mount Gansim Badam, Goa, India. Our Lady was believed to have told Iveta that day that, the people should come and pray on this mount every first Saturday of the month. This was to be the beginning of a series of apparitions to Iveta and extraordinary signs, witnessed not only by the visionary Iveta, but also by the faithful. Mrs. Iveta Cleophas Fernandez, a simple housewife, Married to Mr. Felix Xavier Fernandez has been chosen by divine providence to be an instrument, through whom God through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, wishes to make known his salvific plan for our world in these times, this period of history. This is in the context of the predicted times, and the strategic role of the Immaculate Heart, in obtaining peace for the world through the fulfillment of the Fatima message, and the proclamation of the fifth Marian dogma. The messages coming out of Badim are largely that of Our Lady given more than a hundred years ago at Fatima, Portugal. They include prophetic messages and warnings from Our Lady to beckon us to steer ourselves back to the Heavenly Father. At Badim, as at Fatima, Our Lady urges the faithful to pray the Rosary daily, to offer prayers and sacrifices for the conversion of sinners, to make reparation to the Immaculate Heart of Mary by the first Saturday communion of reparation and to consecrate ourselves daily to her Immaculate Heart. At Fatima and at Badim, Our Lady predicted a period of apostasy or falling away from the faith, see 2 Thessalonians 2-3. Many Christians are now becoming de-Christianized and are pursuing an atheistic lifestyle. There is a general justification of sin, which is no longer looked upon as a moral evil, and even promoted through social media as a positive value and a good. The prophecies of Fatima and Badim speak of the falling away of consecrated souls and a general atheistic way of life. Forgetting one's personal duty to live in the grace of God and to walk along the road of sanctity. So having fought the good fight in this precarious time how sure are we of our salvation and that we will not be tempted by the evil one. God himself provides this guarantee through the devotion and consecration to the Immaculate Heart of Mary for these times. To help us though these anticipated turbulent times, prophesied at Fatima and at Badim, our Blessed Mother brings us a remedy, God wishes to establish devotion to my Immaculate Heart in the world. My Immaculate Heart will be your refuge and the way that will lead you to God. She pleads with us to seek refuge in and consecrate ourselves to her Immaculate Heart. In making an act of consecration to her Immaculate Heart, as requested in Fatima, we dedicate our heart to God, in answer to God's call to spiritual consecration. By reflecting on our motives, repenting and being baptized, we stay apart or separate ourselves from the evils of the world. In committing ourselves to God, through Mary, we draw closer to God and get to know His will for us. To the visionary Veda Fernandez of the Badim apparitions, Our Lady discloses on August 11, 2011. Be not anxious, be not troubled. Simply place all into my immaculate heart. Only I can help, for I am the woman clothed in the sun, who will crush the head of Satan. The triumph of my immaculate heart must be understood in this manner. The devotion of first Saturdays requested by Our Lady at Fatima and at Badim carries with it the assurance of salvation. However, to derive profit from such a great promise of Our Lady, 
the devotion must be properly understood and duly performed. The requirements as stipulated by Our Lady are as follows. Confession, Communion, Five Decades of the Rosary, Adoration of the Most Blessed Sacrament and Consecration of Oneself the Immaculate Heart of Mary. All this to be done in the spirit of reparation. To the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Our Lady has assured us that she will obtain salvation for all those who observe the first Saturday devotion, in accordance with her condition stated above. Remember all of this as merit, only through the sacrifice of her son Jesus on the cross. Again to Yvetta on January 1, 2020 Our Blessed Mother pleads with us to raise the holy sacrifice of the Mass, not just on the first Saturdays at the Holy Mount, Batim, but many sacrifices to atone for the offenses committed against the Sacred Heart of Jesus and the Immaculate Heart of Mary. The prayer that she desires most is the Holy Rosary through which we can overturn evil and bind the forces of evil in our families. During this time of the devastating plague, Tell everybody that God gives graces through the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Tell them to ask graces from her, and that the Heart of Jesus wishes to be venerated together with the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Ask them to plead for peace from the Immaculate Heart of Mary, for the Lord has confided the peace of the world to her. Our Lady at Fatima May we urge you to put into practice the first Saturday devotion to Our Lady of Fatima and in consecrating yourselves to her Immaculate Heart. May she be your refuge and the way that will lead you to God. I am the mother of God, always present, reminding all mothers once again who are failing to consecrate their children by name every, mo every morning and entrust them into my immaculate heart. I will take care of them. Only know that I can do so in these days. I love you dearly. I am the mother of God, the mediatrix of all grace, holy and prince and advocate in heaven, awaiting to be proclaimed on earth. We thank you for listening to this broadcast. May the blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God protect you and bring you to her beloved Son Jesus, our Savior and Redeemer. May Saint Michael the Archangel defend you in the day of battle.
to bring you finally to a mystic who is so close to Padre Pio. You know, he's almost he's a priest. Yes, and a priest can also be a visionary. He's not only a visionary, he's not only a seer. He combines it as a mystic because he's also used by God as an exorcist the power to dispossess evil people. And he's a simple priest, simple background. You'll hear more about him. His name is Father Michel Rodrigue. Rodrigue without the S, final S. A very powerful instrument. Our Lady herself has described him. He is my apostle of the last times. No? And very obedient. His bishop has been encouraging him. Of late, his bishop told him not to give any messages orally. So therefore, he has, in obedience, stopped. And obedience is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. He could have defied his bishop, but no obedience. So he has stopped lecturing, he has stopped giving the messages, and uh, he only writes them down. And uh, the latest message also will be indicated to you, a gist of it. Uh, listen to this great, great instrument. I almost call him a double of uh, Father Pio who was, you know, blessed with so many charisms and he was a true mystic. Now listen, Malin, could you tell us about Father Michel Rodriguez? Because this pertains to Canada. He's based in Canada. Yes, He's, yes. I'm told he is not only a priest, he has founded an order of priests, Catholic Church, and he's the superior general. Beside being a mystic, beside also being a person who is used as an exorcist by the Catholic Church. No? Please continue, Malan, tell us. Yeah. So I would like to really speak to you about uh, this priest, this uh, man of God, Father Mikel, whom my brother has introduced. Uh, you know, he is a man of uh, many charisms. Besides being a priest, he's a mystique, he's an exorcist, he's the superior general and founder of the Apostolic Fraternity of St. Benedict Joseph Lafebvre that was founded as recently as 2012 and naturally approved by the Catholic Church in Canada. He has several qualifications in philosophy, in theology. He is uh, he's teaching others theology in a school, in a college. Besides that, uh, he has started homes for the destitute, for prostitutes, for the orphans. At one point of time, he had to take care of uh, three parishes, uh, parishes simultaneously. Uh, but I would like to explain to you, you know, his childhood and his uh, background because I find uh, so much similarity between him and uh, Padre Pio. Uh, for instance, uh, you know, God would converse with Padre Pio as early as the age of four. In the case of Father Mikel, was born in a very poor farming community. Uh, close uh, 23 children. I don't know exactly in which order he stands, but 23 children is a very large family. And he was uh, very much uh, close to his mother in particular. His father was a very jolly man, we are told, but his mother was very devout and a woman who was to suffer from many illnesses, but very devout. They used to go for the Sunday mass on the backs of horses because they didn't have uh, proper vehicles. And so he grew up in a very holy atmosphere. As early as the age of three, he would find uh, himself speaking to God the Father. For instance, he would sit at the foot of a tree and he would ask the Father in heaven, who made this? And he would hear a distinct reply from heaven saying, I made it. And he says, when the Father said the word I, he could see in front of him the vast expanse of the whole of creation. And he would ask the father so many questions and the father would reply, what is sin? What is this? What is that? And uh, Father Mikhail writes and he says, 
It is so simple to speak to God the Father. I am really amazed that more people do not speak to him because it is such a simple thing. So Father Mikkel, at the very tender age of three onwards, would find it very easy to converse with God. And uh, it is very evident that God had already set him apart to be his apostle in the end times. And so like Padre Pio, Father Mikkel also would uh, suffer tremendous attacks by the evil one. For instance, uh, there was a lake behind their house and once his mother said to him, go, I want you to uh, get something from the lake. But Mikkel was terribly frightened. He was afraid of the dark. And this was at the age of six or seven. However, he went there because he wanted to be obedient to his mother. But when he approached the lake, uh, he found two horrible creatures trying to drag him down into the waters. Fortunately, his uh, brother was there, but the brother with his physical strength could do nothing. And so the only thing uh, Father Mikkel could do at that age was cry out to the Virgin Mary and say, Mama, help me. And immediately a pair of hands uh, pulled him out of the water. He was safe and sound. He ran back to his mother and said, don't ever tell me to go back to that lake again because I don't want to go. So there have been several instances in his uh, life like this. And from a tender age, the Lord began to confirm that this boy is going to become a priest. Uh, for instance, one day, the boy distinctly heard a voice saying to him, Mikkel, Mikkel, almost like in the time of the prophet Samuel, uh, Samuel, Samuel. He ran to his mother. She said, I didn't call him. But when it happened the second time, it happened the third time. The mother said to him, the next time it happens, you say, Lord, here I am. So he said it. And that day when they went for mass, uh, Mikkel was stunned because the reading was exactly that from 1 Samuel chapter 3 where the Lord said to Samuel, 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 and Samuel replied, here I am. So Father Mikkel knew from a young age that God was calling him to priesthood, but they were very poor. Now, when the time came for First Holy Communion at the age of uh, seven, more or less, he was not at all well-dressed, whatever his mother could stitch for him. He wore and he stood there in the congregation. Uh, he was, his clothes were clean, but his shoes were very dirty. And so when he stood in front of the priest, the name of the priest was Father Jamak. Uh, he looked down at his shoes because he was feeling very ashamed of his shoes. And uh, just as Father was about to say, here is the body of Christ. This is the body of Christ. Uh, the little boy looked up and uh, there was a light shining both on the priest and on himself. And he said, Jesus, sorry for my shoes. And he received the body of Jesus for the first time. Now, why this is important and why I'm relating it to you is because years later, when this boy became a priest, he met Father Jamak, and Father Jamak reminded him of this incident. They laughed about it, and then Father Jamak said something very important to him. He said, "You know something? When I held that, uh, when I held Jesus in my hand, and I was about to place the host on your on your tongue, I heard a voice saying to me, this boy who is going to receive the host will become my priest.'" So the priest himself knew well in advance that this boy was set apart for something great. Uh, there have been several instances like that. Even when he was in the seminary, countless obstacles, he would come home and say to his mother, I don't want to become a priest. I'm discouraged. But the mother said to him, it is the Lord who has called you to be a priest and therefore you will become one. And so he finally became a priest. But... Uh, you know, his pastoral work was teaching theology, taking care of the parishes, so many other things. But in the year 2009, in the, on Christmas, in the Christmas season, things took a very dramatic turn. Uh, father was sleeping in his room and at 2 a.m., approximately 2 a.m. in the morning, he, he felt somebody shaking him furiously on his sho at his shoulder. So when father woke up, he, he found himself looking at the face of uh, Saint Benedict Lafebvre. And uh, he was wide awake at that time. That's when he heard the voice of the Heavenly Father saying to him, stand up. So he stood up, go to the computer. So he went to the computer, listen and write, almost like how the Holy Spirit would speak to Philip in the Acts of the Apostles. Go to the carriage, distinct instructions. And when Father Mikkel sat at the computer, within, uh, within a space of two or three hours, the entire constitution of the new order, which he was supposed to be the founder of, was given to him. He says that the Father was speaking to him so rapidly he had to actually tell the Heavenly Father, slow down a little bit because I can't type. 
very fast. The, he was even given a vision of exactly how it should be designed, the monastery, where it should be built. And right enough, immediately things started moving. In 2012, three years after he received uh, this vision from the Heavenly Father, the new constitution was formed. Uh, now, uh, Father Mikhail had uh, several abilities. You know, he was a man of extraordinary intellect. He could read the page of a book and it would remain imprinted in his mind. And uh, the Lord put into his mind everything in theology from the age of three right up till the age of uh, six. So when Father Mikhail started studying theology, he knew in advance what was going to be taught to him. To such an extent, he went to the dean of the university and said, uh, I'm wasting my time here because I know what is to be taught. They they placed before him three comprehensive tests in theology, which he passed with flying colors. He got an A plus and other students would come to him to be taught. So a man of extraordinary intellect, he was given the gift of healing. Like Padre Pio, he could read the souls. People would come uh, for confession. He knew what their sins were. Prophecy, locution, visions, exorcism. There is uh, no end to the charisms God gave him. But above everything, above everything, the quality of simple obedience, submissiveness to the authority of the church is really what it distinguishes him. From uh, uh, my study of Father Michel Rodriguez, I truly consider him to be one of the greatest prophets of these times. I'm not surprised restrictions have been placed on him because the message is not to go if he's restricted, but I can see the fruit of obedience is coming from the fruit of the Holy Spirit. He has simply obeyed. But he has come up with some startling things which have been related to him and a powerful call for conversion in these urgent times. If you could just brief us about uh, that, Marlon. One of the things the Heavenly Father revealed to uh, Father Mikhail is that he would build a second monastery just before the mandate of President Trump would end. At that time, no one knew that President Trump would really lose the elections, but right enough it happened. And by that time, his second monastery was also built. But I would really like to show you the messages that were given to him in the year 2019. At the very beginning of 2019. I believe he had a very, he has a very jovial disposition. Yes, yes. Uh, if you listen and... to him speaking, brother, that is very jolly. Wow, though messages are serious, yet, yes, continue. He's uh, very jolly, he speaks with an accident and laughs at his own uh, errors when speaking. But in January, on January 3rd, 2019, he received a message when he was walking home. January 3rd, 2019, I received a message when I was walking home. It ended me like lightning striking the center of my heart. The father said, my son... You will receive a message this year, but it will not be from me. I have asked St. Michael to give you the message. What Father Mikkel says is he sensed a deep sadness in the voice of the Father because the message was such a sad thing to convey. He preferred that the angel conveys it to Father Mikkel. And St. Michael spoke as follows. The various apparitions throughout the world have revealed the need to return to Christ through the confession of sin, the recitation of the rosary, sincere piety towards the Holy Eucharist. Several messages were sent to humanity to warn of communism, practical atheism invading the world and societies. The perversion and blasphemies of men against God, against life in all its forms have multiplied to such an extent that purification is now necessary. This was given January 2019. We know what happened in December 2019. Uh, a great darkness came over the world because of the pandemic. The message continues to say, uh, renew your consecration to the holy hearts of Jesus and Mary. This is uh, exactly what God wants, renew your consecration. All those who have taken home the holy family. So the message continues speaking about a great darkness which advances on the world. Then, this is a foretelling then of the pandemic. Yes, yes. Because in China, it started the very same year in December. Yes. And uh, moreover, you can see here the advice given. Be sure this year to make a general confession 
We find this repeating again and again. Resume the prayer of the rosary. Pray with the word of God. Keep fasting. So the message that was given is for us to prepare for what is to come. The message concludes, from now on, the hour is coming and the day is near when we will see the salvation of God. Very specific. Be careful. Today, more than ever, we pray with the mother of God for the apostles of the last days to rise. So God's call to everyone is very clear. This was in January 2019. Yeah. Incidentally, as I said, the book of Daniel says in these times, the role of St. Michael the Archangel as fighter of God's force will be prominent. And here it's being confirmed. If we just fast forward to 2020, March 26th, another message was given to him. It says, my dear people of God, we are now passing a test. Now, mind you, this was uh, almost just before the second wave broke out in its uh, fury. We are now passing a test. The great events of purification will begin this fall, meaning to say more or less October, November of March 2020. Be ready with the rosary to disarm Satan, to protect our people. Make sure that you are in a state of grace by having made your general confession to a Catholic priest. The spiritual battle will begin. The month of the rosary will see great things. The message further on went on to say there will be a, a famine. Jesus presented this to me recently. I was in my room when I sat down preparing to go to bed. I saw a black cavalier, a black rider on a black horse, which what Revelation 6 speaks about. This means famine. I will read to you this message. I heard they will have money, but they will have no bread, which means that you can have money to buy it, but you will find nothing. Then all money will crash. So it is good to give your money away now as it will disappear. There will be a great uprising. You will see revolution in your streets. People will fight each other openly. Government will have no other choice than to institute martial law. At the same time that martial law begins, so will the war. And you know, 2020, the uprising in uh, Myanmar, the supporters of Donald Trump uh, stomping, um, going all across uh, Washington. So many things that have happened in 2020 which uh, proves this message. In 2021, that happened in 2021, the storming of capital in... Okay, yes, 2021. January of 2021. And uh, he, the message here says it will begin this fall. And this proved right, because the second wave was any time more severe than the first wave. And it claimed more number of people. And the, and the backup was started in the cold months and took off in India, at least, in March in full force and went on till June, July. Yes. The message concludes with these words. I know that war will come from two countries. One is Korea, the other is Iran. They will come together to face the United States of America. So when you read the news, you know that this is actually what is happening. Towards the end of uh, 2020, Another message was given to Father Mikkel. This was at the end of the year, December 31st, 2020. Great darkness envelops the world. Now is the time. Satan is going to attack the physical body of my children whom I created in my image and likeness. Satan will, through his puppets, rule the world, wants to inoculate you with his venom, which uh, points to the various things that will be injected into our bodies by means of uh, vaccines and all, all these things. So this was on the 31st of December, 2020. I would like to you know, very briefly relate to you the message that was given this year in March, 2021 where uh, Father Mikkel was uh, given very, very clearly and very vividly by Angel Gabriel how exactly the warning will take place, though the dates were not specific, but some of the things that uh, will happen. The whole world will see Christ in the sky. They will see the wounds of Christ. And through the wounds, rays of mercy will flood the whole world. Uh, every soul will see his or her sin, especially the unconfessed sins. There will be people flocking and searching for priests. 
Each priest will have to confess at least 100 penitents a day because people will be really crying out for priests. Uh, small tongues of fire will be upon every soul as though it is a new Pentecost. And it is at this point of time the message says that uh, the world media and those who don't believe will try to downplay the message by saying and giving very scientific reasons for this, such as solar flares and sun rays and radiation. This will be a lie because the media will try to convince that this is not really happening. Uh, Christians will find it very difficult to use technology. And uh, some of the things that are said is a nuclear warfare against uh, America. Seven missiles are headed for the USA. More are supposed to hit USA, but because people are praying the Divine Mercy Chaplet in America, God will uh, avert some of the things that will happen. Which means that this is the precise confirmation of another message that prayers can only reduce at this stage, reduce the extent of injury, but cannot avoid it because it's already upon us. So look at the Divine Father who respects because people are pleading through the Chaplet of Mercy. Otherwise, even those other ones which uh, nuclear missiles which have been deflected would have hit America, but now they won't. Nevertheless, America would be hit. That's one of the messages. And corresponding with what uh, Iveta from uh, Goa said, and also another seer, uh, the message also says that it will be a very difficult time, both for Pope Francis and for Pope Benedict as well. Very difficult times, therefore, asking for prayers. Also, it will be very difficult for people to buy and sell because we would all have to be tied up to one system in order to do commerce. So uh, difficult days are predicted ahead. And uh, the message goes on to say that uh, after this will come the three days of uh, darkness, which Padre Pio speaks about, St. Faustina speaks about, and several others. So this was in March 2021, the message that was given to him. The message that was given in October of this year, and it is a very pertinent message because this year is dedicated to, as we know, to St. Joseph. The message says that on the 8th of December, as we know, the year of St. Joseph comes to an end. And after the year of St. Joseph comes to an end on December 8th, there will be great chaos across the world. And the reason being in the message that is conveyed to Father Mikhail, and this is said to be the last message to him, St. Joseph was the one who protected both the Virgin and the baby Jesus while they escaped from Herod and they returned back. The early years of Jesus are protected by his foster father, that is uh, St. Joseph. And that is exactly the role that was given to St. Joseph this year as well, 2021. In fact, it is no coincidence that this year was declared as the year dedicated to St. Joseph. It was declared in a mighty hurry, but God had already planned this in advance. And in the message it is said, December 8th, this year will come to an end. And then things will start changing for the worse before things become better. And it also added that St. Joseph's role as guardian of the church, and he's truly guardian because he guarded baby Jesus and Mary, as you said, but as his role goes away, as you said, from December 8th onwards, it will give way to the Immaculate Heart to increase. Mary's role to increase even further. And you know, with the Immaculate Heart comes the chastisement, the purification, and finally the triumph of the Immaculate Heart. I will next go and deal with those visionaries who have died. They've already died, but such was their foresight given by God. They could see years after their death would happen. Even after their death, what would happen in the world, including the chastisement, the warning. And foremost amongst them is this servant of God. She's already a servant of God and well on the way to sainthood. Her name is Luisa Picaretta from Italy a woman who spent most of her life in bed because she was bedridden and only stitching cloth, altar cloth, and the Lord spoke to her. Amazing accuracy, she predicted things which would happen even after her death, including the warning, the great chastisement. 
Maybe we have it in video form. The story of history is the greatest story ever written, because God himself holds the pen, and we ourselves, the characters within it alive during the 2020s, are the most blessed of all. Because although we've only read about the exposition in the beginning, and the climax in the redemption, we live in the time of the denouement. This is the time of fulfillment. God is about to arise and take back what is His, and your own eyes will see it. If only you do your part. If only you spared nothing to make it happen. So how is it that I am saying with absolute certainty to you now that the most amazing news you could possibly imagine also just so happens to be true? Because God told Noah the flood would happen, and it did. Because God told 99-year-old childless Abraham that he would be the father of many nations, and so it happened. Because God told Israel's prophets that the Christ would come to save us, and so he did. Because God sent his angel to a lowly virgin from Nazareth to announce his incarnation, and incarnate of this virgin Mary he was. Because this God made man promised in the greatest prayer, the only prayer he taught, that his kingdom would come, and his will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. And because God has now spoken to another lowly virgin of our own era, to announce to the world that the time for the fulfillment of his prayer has come. He has come to an ordinary woman named Louisa to tell the world through her that all he asks of us is that we earnestly beg him for the coming of his kingdom that we desire his kingdom, and know that he wants to give it. He has come to ask us to hand over our own self-wills to him, so that he may give us the greatest possible gift, his own divine will as the very animating force of our lives. He is asking us to say repeatedly and mean it with all our hearts, Jesus, I trust in you. Thy will be done. I give you my will. Please give me yours in return. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And when enough people are saying that, the world will be radically, miraculously transformed before your eyes. It is that simple. I'm a philosophy professor at a secular public New York college and an engineer. If there were any way to doubt this message, I'd be the first to do so. If there were any reason to reject this, I would have been the one to find it. But my job is to follow reason wherever it leads, no compromises. And from this duty it follows, that my job is to announce this message to you. Because even if someone were twisted enough to want, to doubt and reject the greatest news imaginable, He'd be out of luck, because there is no possible way to doubt this. We are confronted with a fact. The Kingdom of God is about to come more fully on Earth than ever before in history. Everything will be transformed. Your life and the entire world will be transfigured so gloriously that you can scarcely imagine it now. I'm not asking you to trust me, and there's no need for that. I'm just asking you to acknowledge the facts. Each of them, by itself, shows the truth of this message. Taken together, they make its falsity categorically impossible. Louisa was endorsed by multiple canonized saints, one of whom dedicated his life to promoting her revelations. She lived a life full of miraculous, even unprecedented phenomena. She was universally regarded as a saint by all who knew her or knew of her. 
and 70 years passing since her death has seen no mar on her legacy of holiness, which only grows by the day, even with miraculous intercession from heaven. Every single event related to her writings and her cause of canonization has proceeded approvingly for decades now, guaranteeing an eventual positive result. So much so that the Vatican itself even recently published her official biography, strongly endorsing her and her revelations. There has not been a single mystic in the history of the Church who has seen this degree of verifications of authenticity and later proven to be a fraud. We are stuck. If you have even the slightest knowledge of mysticism, private revelation, or prophecy, you will realize that it is categorically impossible that we are dealing with a mystic with fraudulent revelations. Page after page, volume after volume, decade after decade, Jesus' revelations to Louisa have, as their entire purpose, promising the coming of the kingdom on earth if only we want it, and the gift of living in the divine will, the greatest possible gift, if only we desire it and ask for it. This isn't a new Bible. It's a private revelation. It doesn't do away with anything that came before. In fact, it presupposes that you are already doing your best to be a friend of Christ's, heed his gospel, and become a saint. It changes no laws, no doctrines, and no sacraments. And it doesn't replace any of the private revelations heaven has already blessed us with. In fact, it makes all of those calls even more important since responding to them can now be done in the divine will and accomplished even more powerfully. But it is the crown of all private revelations, the one that they've all been leading us toward, and the one in which they all find their fulfillment. Search all the private revelations in the history of the church, and this is the only one you will find that was given the express mission by Jesus of ushering in the fulfillment of the Our Father prayer. The coming of the kingdom of God on earth is promised by more prophecies, popes, and approved revelations than I can count. But only one not only promises the era, but also itself has the power to bring the era about. That is, these revelations on the divine will. And their becoming known is up to you. So these, none of these messages are to frighten you. They're messages of hope. But we need to listen to the voice of God. Handwriting is clear. It's very clear on the wall. So we are, as I said earlier, we are not here to convince. We are only trying to convey it and uh, distribute as much as possible this message to others. Who knows? By hearing it, the Holy Spirit may enable them with a little cooperation from them to convert and the course of souls going to hell would be turned onwards and they would go to heaven. God bless you.